So now I want to show you how to find a packet. So for example, here's our trace file. And down here we've got 21,148 packets. And of that, all of them are being displayed. So there is no display filter, which is obvious. So now I want to go find something. Well, you can find it based on several different things. The first thing is, where do you find the find packet? Well, edit, find packet, control F. So I'm going to click away for a moment, control F. And you see that little bar just appeared? See, this guy just appeared. And I'm going to type, for example, I want to find a packet with the word get, G-E-T. Now, it says string. Please pay attention, because if it was a display filter, it would be pink. See that background, pink? So I want to make sure it says string. I'm looking for a string. Get. Find. There you go. And it found get HTTP 1.1. If I want to find the next instance, let's go to edit. Find next is control N. So I'm just going to use the menu this time. And it finds the next one. Now I'm going to use control N, which you're not going to see. So you'll take my word for it. Control N, click. There's the next one. And there's the next one. So that's when you want to find text. Now there's a case sensitive option. If I wanted to make sure I found something very specific, I can use a case sensitive and I can find that packet. Now the other popular way of finding something is by protocol. So I'm going to go to display, filter. I'm going to go over here. I want to go all the way back to the very first packet. So how do we do that? The home key will do that for you. Or you can go to packet number one. Either one will get you back to the top of the screen. Home is a lot better and quicker for me personally. So now I want to find something. So control F. And I'm going to use that display filter format. And I want to type HTTP. See the way it went from pink to green again? Find. <laughs> And there you go. So there's your display filter, HTTP, find, and there you go, HTTP. So I'm finding it by protocol. I could have looked for TCP, IP, UDP, DNS, that sort of thing. So display filter will do that for you. Or if you want to find a string, you would use the string value. So here we are in our trace file. We've got our previous find dialog box, which I'm just going to hit cancel. I want that to go away. I want to go back to packet number one. So we're going to use the home key. That takes us back to packet number one. And now I want to start investigating a conversation. So I'm going to use a display filter here. I'm going to type the words HTTP. I want to find the HTTP traffic. And there it is. It pops right up. So there's my get command. Now I want to filter on just these two IP addresses. So I'm going to right click, conversation filter, IP, and there they are. So pay attention up at the top here. Display filter says IP.ADDR EQ for equals 192, so on and so on, and the IP address equals the other one. So this is a filter for just two IP addresses. Now, if I want to take this further and I said, oh, no, I want to filter on two IP addresses and just these two port numbers. You see here, 53695. Well, the next one's a different port number, 53694. So I might want to say, no, no, I don't want to see two TCP connections or three or four, whatever it happens to be. I want just the one. So I'm going to choose this one. Right click, conversation filter, TCP. And now, just 53694 is talking to 80 and back. And that's what it says up here. So you get a big, long display filter created for you, and you didn't have to type anything at all. So that's how you create a conversation filter, either IP or TCP, without having to go to statistics and conversations, as I showed you in a previous session. So now let's take a look at the Wireshark expert information. So from our trace file, we will go to analyze, expert information. Now just before I do that, I want to just review this little yellow circle here. See that? That tells you the highest expert information level. And that's what it says when you put your mouse over that. It says warning, blah, 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 blah. If I clicked on that, it would take me to the same screen 
as going to the actual analyze expert information screen as well same screen so from here you can see that it says there's warnings notes chats there may be some errors and it's trying to tell you what is going on so my personal opinion and my recommendation for you when you first get started you can use this as a great way of learning about your packets for example I'm gonna come over here to this chat chat is like a database of what's going on and it says your TCP Windows update see that and if I click on it it jumps to packet 23 and that's what it just did over here so if I just move this aside just for one moment I can see what was going on so a few things when you see something like a TCP window update or a zero window or a probe whatever it happens it doesn't matter what it is your first thing you're gonna wonder is is that a problem and the second thing you're gonna wonder is what is it so what is it can be dealt with many different ways there's tons of Wireshark forums in LinkedIn and Google and even when you go to askwireshark.org they have a whole forum of people asking these types of things but as a rule of thumb if you want to find out if something is generally causing an issue what you can do is find out if it's causing delay latency because usually that's what it means when it's slow so if I saw right here there's a window update right here and that delta time is one millisecond you see that one millisecond so if you're at your PC and it slows down for one millisecond are you gonna notice no you're not gonna notice so the point is that's one easy way to find out so if I was to come back here and I'm just randomly gonna pick on another one here TCP window update click and there it is and you can see it was less than a millisecond now I'm going to eyeball this one for a moment. 154 milliseconds, and that sounds awful. 154 anything sounds awful. But again, this is milliseconds, milliseconds. So are you going to notice 154 milliseconds if you're surfing the Internet or downloading a file? Probably not. But let's assume this is an issue. Let's just go, go for it. And we say, yeah, this is a problem. Who's causing it? Well, here we go. 154 milliseconds all you have to do is look at the source whatever that is in this case 192.168.0.3 so in this case 0 0.3 is the guy who received the packet which took 154 milliseconds so what should you do well if it's all on the same network it's easy then I'm gonna go look at 0 0.3 and find out what's going on what also I want to see if this happens again is this a pattern Does this happened 500 times that sort of thing and lastly, if this was not here, if it was on a different network on a different, in a different city, in a different country, well, then you may have to capture from that end to see if it's consistent because it may not be that other guy's fault. It might be the network in between as well. So that's what the chat is good for, is finding out how things work. The notes, notes, Wireshark is starting to put together information and says, I think I know what's going on here. For example, this frame is a suspected spurious or just a regular retransmission or maybe a fast retransmission and just retransmission in general means that I had to send it again right which means things were slow or stuff got dropped whatever the case may be so if I wanted to find out what's going on again I would just open up this note and I see two packets click I'm just gonna slide this guy aside for a moment and you can see 10314 is down here fast retransmission duplicate acknowledgments all that out of order stuff and this is telling me that something was not working out right and TCP is trying to sort it out because that's what it does again look at all the Delta times zero 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 so this all happened and resolved probably within a millisecond right and if that's the case then the protocols are doing what they're supposed to so when protocol analysis do not get hung up on the nitty gritties and the millies and the 10 millies and oh look at all the retransmission packets try to find out how long it took to recover and that will make you understand if it's really an issue so back to here so this is where all this stuff is now last point to the screen if you're not looking for a problem and you just want to learn you can look at this great if you're looking for a problem something specific then you can see if this is going to back you up or show you some additional information when you're troubleshooting as well okay display filters so display filters you can apply them from a previous list if you've got one already created or you can create your own filter so let's jump into Wireshark and let's take a look at this 
So up here, we want to do a display filter. Let's do a very simple one, TCP, enter. There you go. So now we have a filter uh, called TCP. We're looking at just the packets. In this case, 99.8% of them were TCP. And you might want to say, well, what if I had a very specific filter? For example, I'm going to right click on this guy, conversation filter, and TCP. And I have a big complex filter. I don't want to lose that. It's something important I want to keep. So what do I do? So the best thing you can do here, let me just show you. There's this little tiny, looks like a bookmark icon. Click, save this filter. See that? Click. Now I'm just going to pull this back into the screen here. And you can see it says new filter and it gives you this big long whatever you had up there it automatically puts there so i'm going to double click on new filter you can see it's highlighted now and you can just type this is my special ip conversation filter look at that enter so now i've saved it click ok so if i was to go back to this little bookmark see now it's changed colors you can see there it is at the bottom of the list. So now I've got this pull down menu. I'm just going to pick anything at random. It doesn't matter. So nothing met that criteria, which is fine. But now I'm going to choose my special filter, click, and there it is. So it's pretty simple to save whatever filter you had. Now let's take it to the next level. Click, and I want to manage my display filters. And there they all are. So there's two ways to do it through this management screen I'm showing you or you literally can go within your folder with a text editor and you can manipulate the data that way. I'm going to assume you don't want to do that. You want to do it this way. It's a little easier on the brains. So I want to get rid of this one, for example. I made a mistake. I don't want it anymore. I'm going to hit minus. Gone. See that? I really like this one. I don't want to ruin the original one, but I want to make a copy of that. Well, that's what this one's for. Copy. There's the copy. So now I can go and I can play with that all I want. Now I made a mistake. I don't want it anymore. Minus. The last one is I'm not going to click anything and I'm just going to get the plus sign. So now it asks me, hey, what do you want to do? Do you want to create a filter? Oh yeah, right. Okay. So it gives me an example of IP.ADDR, which is an IP address, 192.168.1.1 for example, and my display filter I'm going to call 192.168.1.1, that sort of thing. So there you go. I made a mistake. I don't want it. Minus. Okay, so that's how you can manage your display filters very easily so you can pull back whatever you happen to have used. Now, there's one last thing. It's a pull-down menu right over here, pull-down menu. And this is my most recently used display filters. Again, that's controlled within your preferences under appearance. So in this case, you can see I've done some filters in the past and they're still on that list as well. So while you're working, as long as you're within that recently number, which is about 10 is the default, the last 10 filters, you don't have to save everything. You'll just know that I can look at back at the third or fifth or eighth one and I can pull back that filter without having to save them. All right, the last tip, last trick, last slide of lecture four. So in this case, I've got a trace file and it's titled Telnet 2. I want to find the Telnet packets. So as you can well imagine, we'll go to the display filter and I can simply type T-E-L-N-E-T, -E -E enter. Now there's my Telnet packets, right? Now I want to be able to look inside the packets. And one way to do that is as I go through it, you see down here, you can actually see the data, right? So as I'm going through it, you'll see things like password will come up right that sort of thing um, there's a bunch of stuff and it gets kind of hard to pick out the data when you just see it a character two characters five characters at a time it's kind of hard on the eyes so this is a really neat little feature you can use with text or clear text based applications applications where the data is presented in clear text I'm gonna right click now we have already covered conversation filter and that's not what we're gonna do follow TCP stream, that's TCP data, click. So what this does, let me just bring it back into the screen here, there we go, and it took all the data, it filtered it, now I want you to show you this filter, it's kind of cool, TCP.stream equals zero. So what Wireshark does, it takes the IPs, the pair of IPs and the pair of TCP port numbers, creates a database and it calls it a stream. 
this is the first stream so it's zero the next stream would be one and two and three and four that sort of thing so in this stream zero it pulled all the data out of that packet and it put them all together so what's nice to know about this is the colors so the red is what you type in the blue or purpley is what comes back from the server so you can actually see password this is what the server prompted us for was password and they typed in the following password then they typed a and there was an echo so you get back the a and you typed r and there was an echo and so on so arp was the command and this is what came back so this helps me see what's going on with the application so if there's certain bits of data that didn't make it I can see that if there's formatting issues I can see that if I'm trying to do a security analysis and show the customer the data is in clear text I can do it this way as well so down here on the bottom this is the entire conversation if I click that pull down menu you'll see there's a few options here I could actually choose it from the server click so it's nice and neat I don't see any no input from the client or if I want a shopping list of everything the client typed in I'll use that one and I can see he typed in his password he did the ARP command the IP command SNMP INT and exit there you go so this is also good for HTTP pop SMTP that sort of thing it even works with UDP based applications just when you go to follow you're gonna follow UDP not TCP like DNS TFTP that sort of thing all right, so I hope that helped. This was just a broad introduction to Wireshark. Thanks for watching the class and the lectures. As I said before, I'm going to have an intermediate one with a whole bunch of exercises. So as you get more comfortable with Wireshark, you may want to check that class out as well. Have a good day. Bye for now. All right, welcome to lecture four. It's our last lecture, and we're going to do some protocol analysis and learn some navigational tips and tricks as we move through our trace files. So the first thing we're going to learn about is good old resize column. Then we're going to learn how to use the decode as feature, which I guarantee you will run into. Then we're going to learn how to find a packet. Now you're going to find a packet based on maybe the data payload, maybe the IP address, maybe some protocol stuff. And we're going to show you all three of those. Conversation filter, I just showed you how to do that in the statistics, but I'm going to show you another way of doing that right within the trace file. We're going to go to the Analyze Expert Info screen. So I'm going to show you the database that Wireshark is trying to put together to help you troubleshoot your everyday stuff. We have display filters. Now, display filters, we're going to show you how to type them in. I'm also going to show you how to save your display filters as well. Follow the TCP stream. There's very specific examples of when you want to use that, and I want to show you an example of that. So how do you use the decode as feature? Let's back up. Why, when do you want to use the decode as feature? Never mind the how. So here's a trace file. You can see it says TCP port number 50665 and 8083. 8083 can be anything. So just so you know, port numbers, TCP and UDP has a range 0, well not 0, 1 through 1024 are reserved. So port 80 is HTTP, 23 is Telnet, that sort of thing. So this is well above that. So this is in the non-reserved range. So this could be anything. Now let's assume you know that it's HTTP and it happens to be, for example, your proxy port number. So if you want to be able to decode this, because Wireshark won't know what it is, then you simply right-click, you go to Decode As, this screen pops up, please verify your decoding the correct port number. We want 8083, not the other one, not 50665. Select HTTP and OK. All of a sudden, now it says HTTP GET and whatever the command is. So just a few qualifiers. This only works with clear text protocols. So if this was all encrypted, like SSL, HTTPS, TLS, all that kind of stuff, this is not going to decrypt that. That's not what this is. So this is a very helpful way that if you have an application and on the back end it's using a protocol that you want to be able to decode that you know is clear text, give it a try and it's going to help you analyze your data a lot easier.